Whenever you have an opportunity to get something of good quality for even greater value, you have to take that chance every single time. There should never be a doubt in your mind about making it happen. It should never even cross your mind like, oh, oh man, I'm going to regret this. No, if it's of great value and it's good quality, they go hand in hand. So it's, it's a no brainer to me. Oh, oh, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, y'all thought we were talking about Kadarius Tony? No, we talking about Kentucky Cobblers, baby. Go to KentuckyCobblers.com so you can have your best cobbler dreams fulfilled, man. They got literally over 40 flavors of cobbler. Nobody's doing that. Over 40 flavors of cobbler. And I mean, we all love Lamar, too. They from Louisville, Kentucky. I mean, hello, Kentucky Cobblers. So follow them on Instagram. Go to their website and hit them up hit them up tell them engraving fear sent you so go ahead and pause the video right here while you put your order of cobbler in and then after you finish you can unpause it and we can get to questions from subscribers first question came from my guy rodney k he said what's up engraving hope you're doing well love to see how much this channel has grown hey i appreciate that thank you uh, my question for you is how do you feel about Kadarius tony the giants recently decided that they wanted to trade him which i see as a great opportunity to get a great wide receiver for cheap and use our picks in the draft to address some other positions. Please let me know what you think. And as always, be safe and team, keep it clean. Appreciate that. Ooh, Kadarius Tony. Wow. Um, he is somebody shifty. Yeah, I mean, he's like shifty on a whole nother level, man. Um, he is somebody, when they got the ball in their hands, they can make some stuff happen. He's like, uh, somebody said it earlier, he's like a, a cheaper version of Debo Samuel. Um, and they also both got injury problems too. Uh, what I did, because I had heard about his injury problems. I know he missed some time with the Giants or whatever. So I went, I said, you know what? Let me just go back to his whole injury history, everything. And let me see if there's any patterns, any, but let's get to it. So October 9th, 2017, he had a shoulder injury. He missed a game against Texas A&M with a shoulder injury. November 4th, so a month later, he had a shoulder injury again. He injured his shoulder, and he missed the rest of the game against Missouri. Um, then September 7th of 2019, so two years later, uh, he had a shoulder injury again. Uh, said he suffered a shoulder injury uh, during Florida's September 7th win over UT Martin, and he ended up missing six games. Then two years later, uh, this is the NFL now, no more college ball. Uh, so two years later, he had a thigh and hamstring strain grade two. He missed most of training camp with that injury. Then uh, in October, so two months later, um, he had a pedal ankle sprain and a pulled unspecified grade one. Uh, and he suffered that in the week five game against the Cowboys, but then he came back the next game. So then the next week, that same injury, he aggravated his existing ankle injury in week six loss to the Rams. He ended up missing one game. So then a month later, November 22nd, 2021, he missed four games due to a quad injury. And then December 1st, 2021, he missed three games due to an oblique injury. Then December 29th, uh, he ended up, said he picked up a shoulder injury ahead of uh, the seven, week 17 game. So, wow. He has a uh, injury history and the, the repeat injury seems to be his shoulder. Um, so with him, we know about his ability. Uh, he's about six foot, uh, like 196, something like that, a little under 200. Um, with the ball in his hands, he can make some, and again, he's shifty. So the, the thing that Ravens need more of is yak. We need more yak, big time. Uh, we lack in yak. Uh, so he could bring that, but how much would he really be on the field? Uh, he is a first-round pick. Uh, some people think he was overdrafted. Um, but if the Ravens could get him for, like, mm, one of those fourth-round picks that they got, I wouldn't be mad at all. But if they did get him, I would not want the Ravens to be like, all right, receivers addressed, boom, we're done. No. I would still want them to make a move for a significant guy, whether they drafted somebody very high or they still made a trade for somebody. Now, if they were to get somebody like a Kadarius Tony, would that take them out of uh, this whole Debo Samuel running? If there even is one, who knows? Would it take them out? I ain't forget about DK Metcalf either, man. I ain't forget. I, I ain't forget, man. I know ain't nobody been talking about him, but I ain't forget. Uh, as far as AJ Brown, that'd be nice. Ooh, that oh that'd be really nice. But it's 
I just don't see the Titans. I, I think there's no chance the Titans to trade them to the Ravens. Um, but Kadarius Tony, like I said, for like a, a, a fourth, one of those fourth round picks, I would not mind it at all. At all. Worst case scenario. And you would have him for like at least the next three years. Because he'll still be on his rookie deal. But again, my biggest thing is if they were to bring in a Kadarius Tony, we know what he can do, but I just wouldn't want it to change much to as far as what they would do at the receiver position. Uh, cause he, he's a playmaker, but he would have to be on the field and they would have really had to do some extensive, extensive work and, and like research on that shoulder to make sure it's a okay. Um, and not rush him back. Now, again, they did hire, I think Adrian Dixon from the Titans and he's supposed to specialize in recovery. So hopefully with Ronnie Stanley, with Nick Boyer, with Pat Ricard, uh, with Marcus Peters, with Marlon Humphrey, with all that, Lamar Jackson, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, Justice Hill, with all our guys that we lost to injury, hopefully their recovery, their recovery is nice, it's nice and smooth process. But if we were to get a Kadarius Tony, then that would be my biggest concern would be the uh, injury history. But again, I just wouldn't want that to be change any plans that they may have at wide receiver. Um, or, or I wouldn't want it to change any plans that they would have f for a significant wide receiver. Because again, your best ability is availability. And if you're not available to play, what good is it? Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. So team keep it clean welcome to another episode of questions from subs where you can ask any nfl question you want and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons who is actually the next three questions come from patrons so i appreciate y'all uh if you want to be a team keep it clean patron then you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and you can see your question right on there uh and if you don't want to be a team keep it clean patron that's completely fine please do not ever feel bad I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. The draft is literally right around the corner. Let's get into these questions. Next question came from Heather and appreciate you being a patron, Heather. She said, hey, great. I wanted to thank you for all the great content you continue to put out there daily. Hey, I, I appreciate you even watching it. Thank you. I don't know if it's great, but thank you for watching it. Uh, she said, also, I'm glad to be a part of the team. Keep it clean because uh, it's almost like family. I uh, just wanted to know how you felt about the Ravens possibly trying to go after Debo Samuel. He definitely would fit right in with the Ravens schemes, being that we are a run first team. We should really go in on him. I wouldn't be mad if they got Debo Samuel at all, but I just I don't I don't see it happening. Um, I think um, they the 49ers will want some significant draft capital and Ravens don't like coming off a of significant draft capital. So it's just a move that I just I don't think it's going to happen. It is uh, more likely it happening than somebody like A.J. Brown, like we talked about earlier, since that would be going from NFC to AFC instead of A.J. Brown, AFC to AFC. But I just, I don't know, I don't see it happening. I, I, I just, I, I really don't. I wouldn't be mad if it did, but I don't see the Ravens being willing to give up uh, whatever it takes to get a Debo. Next question came from my guy Nazarene, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, what's good, bro? Man, it's getting close to that time of the year. Off season is like a holiday season to me, LOL. But hey, I want to have a, like a football talk. A lot of our fans overrate anyone who is in the Ravens organization. Oof, he coming with some fire right now. Ooh, calm down, man. It's too early for this. Uh, I want to touch on how some fans act like Roman can't be replaced because he is the reason for Lamar Jackson's success. Uh, he said they think he is the reason for Lamar Jackson's success. I want them to understand that Greg Roman is not that guy for any quarterback and that he loves to use QBs as running backs. Maybe it's just me, uh, but Cap, uh, Tyrod Taylor, and Lamar were used incorrectly. Shouldn't a QB have more special passing plays instead of special running plays designed for them? Roman's pass, Roman's pass plays are so basic. You will see receivers almost running into each other with his pass plays. We can grab an offensive coordinator from college, and they can do the same thing he does and even better. Now with Roman, that, that has been a, a big talk about Roman and his scheme. Uh, just the, the lack of spacing and guys just being around the same area a lot. Um, I remember a play specifically from last year. It was in the, the, the Browns game. Um, I think, yeah, the four interception game uh, where it was like Bateman was there. Andrews was there. 
Was Hollywood there too? At least Baby and Andrews, they, they were like right by each other. And it looked like the play was intended for Andrews and Lamar trying to throw to him. But Bateman, since he was so close to Andrews, he thought it was for him. And he reached up and tipped the ball up and it, and it got picked off. Was that the Browns game or was it the Vikings game? Anyway, um, I, I guess I don't remember the play specifically. I remember the play, but I don't remember the game that it was against. But, um, yeah, stuff like that has been a lot of people have been complaining about that. Uh, he said that. Uh, we can grab OC from college and they can do the same thing. He does it even better. Not saying just any OC, but man, Greg Roman style has been played out in the NFL. Yeah, we're hoping for some that it evolves, that it evolves, that it takes another step forward this year. We can hope. Um, I know uh, history says otherwise, but I, th I don't think T. Martin and Keith Williams are there for no reason. Uh, he said he goes to new teams and looks good the first couple years and it's figured out by year three. Am I wrong? I'm saying this because I'm with you on Debo and the Ravens. He would uh, he would use shorty into the ground. Uh, and not to mention, Debo says he no longer wants to be a hybrid wide receiver. Basically, the running back stuff he doesn't want to do anymore. I think he directed that statement to us. I want Lamar to have an offensive coordinator who either specializes in QBs or wide receivers. And me personally, I think Lamar is so humble that he won't say anything about it. Yeah, the most that we're going to get is what he said already. When he was like, oh, Giro, cool, but he said that's up to them people upstairs. That let me know all I, need, all I needed to know. I felt like right then and there that Lamar was saying, uh, yeah, I ain't really feeling this guy like that. But, hey, who knows? Um, he said, Greg Roman, by no mistake, was not demoted every time he left the team for no reason. I felt that same way about Wink when he said he doesn't have to use edge rushes to get pressure. Wink turned DBs into pass rushes while turning pass rushes into DBs. <laughs> All love and appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you too, Nazarene. We're going to see what happens with Greg Roman. Hopefully, he'll take a, a step forward and a step up and, and be better, but we can hope. Now, speaking of Greg Roman, next question came from my boy Kendrick. And appreciate you being a patron. He said, what's the word? And Greg just wanted to run a thought I've had on this upcoming 2023 season. Do you think that the reason Greg Roman wasn't fired this year is because the Ravens have a trick up their sleeve? Last year, we heard the vault was going to be open in the Greg Roman offense. We brought in T. Martin and Keith Williams, but all the injuries started happening. Dobbins, Gus, Bateman, Hollywood, etc. And they had to pick up multiple free agents. Do you think they kept the vault safe for when their roster would be fully healthy? No, I don't. I, 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 I really don't. Um, when that whole vault talk started, uh, there was like one play that was different. Um, I just think that they just wanted to see this offense with no excuses. Um, last year, they, of course, gave him a pass. Hey, everybody was hurt. All right, cool. And this year, I just think they want no excuses from anybody. Hopefully, they don't take any excuses from anybody either. Anyway, um, he said, uh, I might be trying to give Roman more credit to think he might elevate, but why throw all your new plays with a team you got thrown without moment notice? Uh, they didn't go into the season with the players they expected, so they had to adjust according to their skill sets. And not make it too complicated for them. Let me know your thoughts. And happy to be a new patron. Big trust. Appreciate that, Kendrick. That's a good point um, about the fact that yeah, they they weren't they obviously weren't expecting all these guys to go down. The the team that they ended up with wasn't the team that they projected to have. So that could certainly alter and change some plans. But I, I still think it, it was still even a, a lack of uh, using the guys that they already had because these were guys that they had. A lot of them were guys that they had the previous year. Um, so it was guys that they were co comfortable with, familiar with, and a lot of them still weren't even getting used right. So I, I, I just, I don't, I, I don't think that vault is really anything serious. Ho hopefully he proves all of us wrong though. Well, at least me. Hopefully he proves me wrong, and that vault gets that vault gets opened up, and we look at this offense like wow. Next question came from my boy JPD. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope you're doing well and have the opportunity to enjoy the fruits of your labor." Oh, for sure. I appreciate that a lot, man. Wanted to ask, what are your expectations for the Ravens this upcoming season? Regardless of who the Ravens draft this week and sign with the rest of available time before the season starts, I'm personally just going to enjoy the opportunity and privilege of watching Lamar Jackson play QB for the Ravens, whether he signs with the team or not after this year. Mm. A lot of news and smoke screens have been released about his contract situation with the Ravens and nothing will be set in stone until the real news breaks in regards to his future. That's true. That's true. We could do all the speculating. We could think about this and that and the third. But until he is on the Ravens long term or not on the Ravens long term, then that's all it is. It's just going to be speculating. But it is fun to speculate. Anyway, he said, um, whatever happens, I'm going to gratefully enjoy watching Lamar play for my hometown team this upcoming season. Mm, OK, cool. Hey, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we all are, too. Um, 
my expectations for the Ravens this upcoming season, um, I do expect them to be in the playoffs. Um, right now, I expect them to at least win one playoff game. Expectations. Uh, hopeful that they obviously win all of them, but I expect them to win at least one. Um, but I just, I, I just want them to be. No, I'm, I'm no, nope, I'm talking about expectations right now. Expect, and this is before the draft too. I expect him to win at least one playoff game, though. Next question came from my boy T Streets. He said, a big sleeper. What's up, Engraven T here from New Orleans. Longtime Ravens fan. I ran across your channel at the beginning of 2020 season and been hooked ever since. Just became a patron and figured out I'd kick it off with my first question from Subs. It's pretty lengthy, so here it is. Hey, I appreciate you, T. Thank you, man. Uh, I hear you and a lot of people talking about uh, Jordan Davis at 14, who is a great player, by the way, but I don't hear too many talking about his teammate, Devontae White. Oh, somebody was just talking to me about this, too. Uh, if you don't know him, too, well, you should definitely give him a look. He's 6'3", 304, runs a 4'7", uh, in a 40, 29-inch vertical jump, and is a real menace in them trenches. Last season, first team, all SCE, uh, all, excuse me, all SEC selection. 39 tackles, 7 for a loss with 2.5 sacks, 2 forced fumbles and 14 starts versus Davis's 32 tackles, 5.5 for a loss with 2 sacks and 14 games. And I feel that he can cause just as much havoc uh, and still be as complimentary to the linebackers as Davis. Plus, I feel he'll give more help to the DBs because he'll give more of a pass rush than just a run stuffer. He's quicker, just as strong, and has more durability and athleticism than Davis. I only say that because if you pay attention to Georgia's games, Davis is out on a lot of the obvious passing downs while Wyatt stays in, uh, and which shows he can really get after the quarterback. With all that being said, I feel Wyatt may be a better player overall than Davis, especially as a pure pass rusher. All right. So, yeah, I've heard a lot of the same stuff, too. Um, that, yeah, that he was just as important um, to what Georgia did uh, as Davis was and like you said that uh, when Davis came off the field he was still there now um, the only other thing that I've heard don't know how true it is but they said that he might have some DV stuff uh, in his past so if if that is true I'm sure Ravens have done extensive research on him uh, but if that is true um, then I would think that the Ravens they that may make them uh, stay away uh, but we'll see he said, here's my question. Do you think it'll be smarter for the Ravens to pass on Davis, move back from 14th pick to get additional picks to grab wide and maybe grab Pickens as well? Or do you feel we'll do better with Davis? Uh, looking forward to hearing your thoughts. I feel like it's one of those things where you almost can't go wrong. Uh, Jordan Davis, though, his, um, he just crazy like huge and um, just, again, the presence. And I, and I know that he brings the presence as well. But um, like Wyatt brings a presence as well. But Jordan Davis, like, it's just crazy to think about if the Ravens had somebody like that, um, th what he could do, uh, for their team with his presence alone. Now Wyatt, uh, with his presence and skill, um, he was certainly helping, and he probably could add more as a pass rusher, uh, as an interior pass rusher, um, than Jordan Davis. So I feel like you 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 can't really go wrong with either one, in my opinion. Um, so the Ravens could face a scenario where they trade back, but again, I just think the biggest thing is the the the, the DV stuff. If that is true, if it's true, um, then I think that could change stuff for the Ravens. You said big fan of the channel and the team, keep it clean community. Never miss a video, <laughs> helps my work day and off season go by a lot smoother. And it seems you really enjoy it. Hey, we do, man. I appreciate that. I'm happy for you. Wish you the best for you, you and your fam, and the rest of the team. Keep it clean. I'm out. I really appreciated that last part a lot, man. Thank you.